Kiki Kogelnik was born on the 22nd of January 1935 in southern Austria and grew up in the town of Bleiburg. Her father was an accountant, her mother was a school teacher. She was the middle of three children and was originally named Sigrid. Kiki was a nickname her elder brother Herwig gave her and she later chose to adopt it, becoming Kiki Kogelnik. She initially studied at the Vienna Academy of the Applied Arts under the sculptor Hans Kniesel where she made the two early plaster sculptures included in this exhibition, Untitled Head and Untitled Figure, in 1954. These iconic objects are reflective of a common post-war European sensibility. Both figurative and reductively angular in form, they evoke a melancholic pity and sadness. In 1956, she enrolled at the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts to study under the painters Albert Paris Gutesloh and Herbert Buchel. Her work was firmly rooted in the traditions of modernism, her paintings made with a palette of sombre colours and flat painterly forms. In 1958, she was awarded a grant that enabled her to travel to Paris, London, Dublin, Rome and Norway. And with this, her work became more spontaneous with looser, more gestural marks. While on a visit to Paris in 1959, she met the artists César, Joan Mitchell and San Francis, who she became involved with and later visited New York with in 1960. Relocating there permanently in 1961, taking up residence in his studio at 940 Broadway at 23rd Street, just two blocks away from the legendary Chelsea Hotel. Recollecting New York in the early 1960s, film historian P. Adams Sidney recalled, there was so much going on in any area you wanted to mention. It was as if the world had been turned upside down. Up in a townhouse on the Upper East Side, Leo Castelli was showing Jasper Johns and Robert Rauschenberg. You could see Merce Cunningham at the Judson Memorial Church. It was a wonderful, exciting time. There was an influx of creative people from around the world in New York, escaping the austerity of a war-scarred Europe and Asia, encouraged by American cultural grants, which led to a heady mix of cultures and ideas in a country that was rapidly losing its straitjacket of conformity. Pop art was in the ascendancy, fervently embracing mass-produced imagery. Kogelnik, introduced by Sam Francis, quickly became part of the New York scene, a fixture at openings and parties, becoming friends with artists such as Klaus Oldenburg, Roy Lichtenstein and Larry Rivers, amongst others. Andy Warhol, when writing about her in 1964, just wrote the word great 25 times. When interviewed in 1996, she said, I was on the sidelines of what was going on. I was appreciated by the people, but I was not one of the pop artists. I didn't want to be, and I wasn't. This statement is perhaps not unsurprising. As a European who lived through the war in Austria and experienced its aftermath, she was resistant to the glorification of commercialism, preferring to refashion found objects as elements within her paintings. Her form of pop is closer to French nouveau realists, many of whom she was also friends with, who incorporated everyday objects into their work. She declared in 1966, I'm not involved with Coca-Cola. I'm involved in the technical beauty of rockets, people flying in space and people becoming robots. When you come from Europe, it is so fascinating, like a dream of our time. The new ideas are here, the materials are here. Why not use them? Here she is in her studio with a number of decommissioned US military shell casings, which she is transforming into sculptures. In the background can be seen an array of large paintings made in 1964, which contain brightly coloured bodies floating in cosmic spaces made up of variously sized discs. Klaus Oldenburg, reminiscing about her in 1997, said, she was to be seen in the early 60s in costumes using new materials, fake fur and vinyl, which were just coming out. They made her a walking work of art. And here, Kogelnik can be seen wearing her cowskin dress, lying on Oldenburg's leopard chair at his exhibition at the Dwan Gallery in Los Angeles in 1963. She, in turn, made her friends into art, tracing their bodies and cutting the resulting silhouettes out of coloured vinyl. This is Klaus Oldenburg's silhouette, cut out of black and yellow vinyl, draped elegantly over a chrome clothes hanger in a piece titled Klaus from 1970. She remained a constant visitor to Austria 
especially after the birth of her son in 1967, choosing to spend the summers there, and it was here in 1974 that she was first introduced to ceramics by her artist ceramicist friend, Renata Furi, who she would later share a ceramic studio with in Vienna during the 1970s. Her first works were a series of bulbous heads made from the discarded vase forms that Renata had made. To these she added elements and applied glazes. Many of these original works were probably self-portraits and capture various aspects of how she used to dress up. The airman's helmet and goggles of starry-eyed reflect her early aspirations for space travel, its eyes reduced to small circles, each with their own four-pointed star set within the rich mottled red glaze she used for the skin. The sculpture shows from the start her attention to the materiality of clay and the use and control of glazing. Bluebird has a more straightforward blue glaze that covers the head and her jaunty peaked cap. Her pursed lips are picked out in a pastel pink and her large round glasses in white as are the circular perka dots on her lenses. The green extended eyelashes of Sleepy Head seem to echo the ones painted directly onto Kiki's face in this photograph from 1960. Just as in her works in other mediums, portraits of others also occur. This work, known as R equals R from 1975, is a portrait of the artist who encouraged her adoption of ceramics, Renata Fury. This exhibition, Kiki Kogelnik, Riot of Objects, was conceived and curated by the American curator Chris Sharp, who runs a project space in Mexico City called Lola with the Mexican artist Martin Soto Clement. He was interested in looking beyond Kogelnik's contribution to pop and feminism to consider this less overtly political part of her practice. Where previous exhibitions have sought to reflect on and contextualised her interest in the body, its relationship to technology, and questions about feminism and its relationship to popular culture, this exhibition focuses exclusively on a commitment to making formal innovation, materials and diversity. His exhibition intentionally limits itself to just the freestanding ceramics, as these works on their own demonstrates just how vast and varied was her production over 30 plus years. The exhibition and its design is modelled on an exhibition she had at the Henry Gallery in Washington DC in 1990 called Inside the Clone Factory. In this exhibition, as can be seen in this photograph, she arranged a group of differently sized pedestals to form an island on which she installed her sculptures. This island cluster has been remade and duplicated across two of the galleries at Mostyn on which 36 individual sculptures have been arranged in roughly chronological order. The second island shows examples of works that are more visibly modelled in their making. Writing about her enthusiasm for ceramics in the 1980s, she states, I was immediately enchanted and drawn to the touch and squeeze of the material. Working in clay reminds me of playing. I love to use my hands this way, and it is dangerous when I get carried away doing this, forgetting there are certain restrictions of the material. I have messed up quite a lot of pieces this way. They would later break in the oven. But you learn from experience. I still love to take risks with the glazes, and it's always exciting to open the door of the kiln and see what has happened. I'm lucky. Mostly it turns out better than I anticipated. The very striking, untitled Sea Monster from 1974 was made at the same time as the heads in the first grouping. Here the eyes are now hollow voids, its skin a spotted green, and it appears to be wearing some form of breathing apparatus. This head sits in contrast to its appearance on a decorative base adorned with pink flowers that seems to reach back to the Viennese decorative arts of the 1900s. Kogelnik was particularly fascinated by the work of the Austrian maker Valerie Vesseltier, who she collected and owned a group of decorative heads and figures, which were similarly inventively glazed. Also included in this group is Holiday on the Palm Tree, from 1980, where a tiny figure appears to have taken refuge from a huge lizard-like creature in the fonds atop of a single palm tree. This is one of a series of holiday sculptures that include Holiday in the Fish, Holiday under the Table, and Holiday at the Temple all of which share a similar sense of humour, and it is a theme that she revisited in a suite of drawings in 1982. In contrast with this escapism, Bowl with Balls, Bookstand, Stitch and Snake Vase, all from 1986, seem more grounded in the domestic and the everyday. 
a state of frustration that seems expressed in the totemic lonely face and the spike encrusted face of yellow morning which echoes an animal trap in its folded form. Personal biography perhaps is never far from the surface in much of Koglenik's work. Both these two works show Koglenik starting to build her ceramic forms using slab work which involves rolling the clay flat with a rolling pin and then cutting out a form using a template. And this in turn harks back to the silhouettes to be found in her earlier paintings and her vinyl hangings. These forms, now cut from clay, are assembled to form part of a structure, as in the towering house of cards like Robot 2 from 1986, or as seen on the third island, untitled Standing Head, where a blue mottled face has been embellished with the pink and gold hands of a clock which take the place of its nose. With untitled face, in its deconstructed form, the eyes become like daggers, pointing upwards. Its separated, pink lower face becomes a curvaceous, abstract shape with a mouth-shaped hole edged in vibrant red. Double floating heads introduces the persona of the doppelganger with two interchangeable masks, their roles as yet unassigned. Kogelnik's boundless capacity for invention and restless commitment to making really come to the fore in this exhibition. Yet, for all their difference, these works are manifestly unified by a similarity of scale, which speaks both to the experimental nature of the model, i.e. the model or maquette as an ideal site of experiment, and the embracing of the intrinsic intimacy of ceramics as a medium, which is both necessarily small and handmade. In 1978, she and her family moved to a building on Lafayette Street in New York, just above Soho, where she was able to create her own dedicated ceramic studio, which was adjacent to her painting studio. Similarly, in the 1980s, she established a ceramic studio in a portion of her mother's house in Bleiburg. Ceramics became a central part of her practice, alongside painting and drawing and printmaking. These disciplines fed into each other as motifs developed in one would then be adopted and explored in another, and at times were combined, with ceramic elements appearing on paintings and forming parts of sculptural installations. Hungry Skull is one of two suspended works in the exhibition. Like many of her ceramic works, their form has many similarities with other works made by Kogelnik, in this case, smaller works made in vinyl, such as Nobody Loves Me from 1970. The skull is a motif found throughout her work and possibly references the Germanic trope of death and the maiden in it expresses the bond between beauty, sexuality and death. The skull appears again on the final island in another doppelganger work, Carpe Diem II from 1993. The two heads back to back, the spiky haired face on the front painted in broad brushstrokes of green, yellow, red and blue gives way to the biscuit intensity of the skull on the back, their eye holes hauntingly aligned. Known to work in series, she would often explore a given motif, whether it be a mask with different glazes, a hand or a totemic form, until it was all but exhausted, wringing from it in many cases as many variations as possible. Throughout the 70s, 80s and 90s, she produced hundreds of sculptures made for both the plinth and the wall. And of course, the idea of the self-portrait was always present. The fourth and fifth islands are populated with a series of heads which further demonstrate Kogelnik's endless invention as she explored the expressive possibilities of this motif throughout the 1990s. The nod to Brancusi's endless column echoed in the base of Blue Clone, the face atop an almost abstract form. The pastel blue coloured skin of Standing Face sports what appears to be a bad case of chicken pox, each red glistening pustule about to burst and ooze its contents in response to a child's itch. And Guardian Angel, audaciously sprouting leaves from its crown placed high on a vented pedestal, that also served as a maquette for a bronze and concrete public sculpture commissioned by the watchstrap manufacturer Hirsch and sited outside their headquarters in southern Austria. Kogelnik at this time was not only making sculptures in ceramic, but also casting in bronze and aluminium. And from 1994, she embarked on a series of glass heads, working with a master craftsman in Marano, Italy. 
The Comparatively Sober Non-Dialogue, 1996, was made in the year before Koganik died. It is one of a series of four works. Each of the two heads varies in the shape of the eyes, the form of the mouth and spikes of the hair, their relationship to each other on a flat base shifting each time. Koganik died on the 1st of February 1997 in Vienna, where she was receiving treatment for cancer. She was 62. She left behind a rich legacy of work that in the years following her death have been rediscovered and re-examined by a generation of artists and historians. It is a body of work that, while speaking to the time it was made, also defines its own cultural space. From paintings of space rockets to self-portraits, from vinyl cutouts to ceramic sculptures, Koglenik's work remains distinctly and uniquely hers.